There's a deep-rooted hatred for Justin Trudeau, not just in Canada by Canadians, but internationally. I mean, India's been very vocal about, the mainstream media at least has been very vocal about their hatred and criticism for Justin Trudeau, as has uh, Sky News from Australia, even America, even a lot of very high-profile public figures in America, like uh, Jordan Peterson. Well, I know he's Canadian, but I believe he's residing in America. And uh, Joe Rogan. Rogan and as well as Elon Musk. And we're not talking about any of those people. We're actually talking about Justin Trudeau's ex-wife, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, who's uh, cashing in on F. Trudeau ideology. Welcome back to another video, everybody. This is very bizarre. There's not many uh, world leaders that you see whose ex-wives come out and make books about him and have very bad things to say about their ex especially as a world leader but i'm all i'm all for it welcome back to another video everybody before we get into it i want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already it does really help grow the channel we're very close to 400,000 subscribers on this channel and uh if, if you would uh like to support the channel above and beyond just subscribing then uh, i have a message from today's sponsor and supporting the sponsor actually does help support the channel i want to thank today's sponsor private internet access we have teamed up together and they are willing to offer my audience audience 83 percent off by using code sunshine which can be found linked down in the description or the pinned comment below there is a massive amount of censorship that's happening around the world and justin trudeau is taken into his own hands which is why you need to protect yourself with a vpn now what a vpn does is encrypts your personal information so that when you're browsing on different websites your info isn't shared it's almost a way of putting a cloak over yourself and the favorite way that i go about doing this is with private internet access even when it comes to simple things like getting the right information from the news, there is massive amounts of censorship happening. And the only way that you can really get an unbiased opinion is with a VPN. But above and beyond that, if you want to get different shows and movies on different platforms such as Netflix or Disney, and there's these geolocation restrictions, the only really way around that is with a VPN such as private internet access. Not only can you do that from a computer or a tablet, but you can also do that from your phone, which is why private internet access is the best way that I like to go about it. It's user friendly, it's very affordable, and it's a best way of saying F you to the government. Once again, the link for private internet access and code sunshine is linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. And just remember, the government doesn't want you to hide your identity, but you should take the matter into your hands. And that's why private internet access and I have teamed up to offer you guys 83% off. Thank you, private internet access for sponsoring today's video. All right, so we're going to do a little update here on the polls. You're going to get to see why uh, it's it's um, you're seeing a lot of people come out and say, hey, man, I actually don't like Trudeau, including but not limited to Justin Trudeau's ex-wife. In the polls, you have uh, th 170 seats you need for a majority. Conservatives uh, did drop down from 210. I think it was from 210 to 204, and they're back up to 210 projected seats, a bottom line of 182. They only need 170 for majority. And when you look at the odds of winning the most seats, of course, conservatives are still holding that very, very close, close lead, right? 99% likely to win and uh, odds of outcome 99% likely for a majority with a 1% likelihood of a minority. And I think you're going to see this fluctuate a little bit, but I think the conservatives will remain in the 90 plus percentile of our odds of winning the majority. It doesn't seem like Justin Trudeau is really capable of any amount of collateral damage uh, to increase his chances of, uh, of, of winning, especially when you have people that the liberal supporters and NDP supporters actually like, such as Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, who came up with this to say about Justin Trudeau. The next chapter, with the upcoming release of her first book, which focuses on mental health, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau is turning the page to a brighter future by literally talking smack in her book about her ex-husband, Justin Trudeau. When I walk into the lobby, 
of the Le Germain Hotel in Ottawa to meet Sophie Gregoire Trudeau with my mom. She didn't want me to drive alone from Montreal in the snowstorm like conditions of deep Canadian winter, so she came along. When we drive, Sophie Trudeau is standing casually wearing a belted black puffed coat, and as soon as she spots us, she rushes over, introduces herself, and gives us a hug. When I present my mom, her eyes well up with emotion you two remind me so much of me and my own mother she says she would do exactly the same thing this is the first thing i learned about sophie gregoire trudeau she feels very deeply and her emotions are right there on the surface ready to spill over and envelop those around her but it's not on an uncomfortable feeling. On the contrary, it's very warm, sincere, and compassionate. Grégoire Trudeau radiates an openness that immediately puts you at ease. She's like that friend everyone shares their secrets with. Which is why it's so powerful that you have this woman who comes out and is making a book about the Prime Minister of Canada. First of all, I would have thought that this isn't allowed. Hey, Sophie, just because things aren't working between us, I still have to lead the country. And you know that things are not looking very good for the liberals. Is I'm, I'm assuming a conversation that Justin Trudeau would have had. So please don't make things worse for me. Just because our marriage didn't work, I also want to be prime minister. Well, Sophie doesn't see it that way. Uh, and to whether or not she has chosen to share, the events of her 48-year-old, the events of the 48-year-old's life has also been very out in the open. That includes her 18-year marriage and the recent separation from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The pair jointly announced the latter event on Instagram on August 2nd last year. Though their declaration became international news that spurred speculation and endless articles examining what went wrong, the split is something Gregoire Trudeau has declined to discuss in the media up until this point. Bum, bum, bum. So we're going to do a bit of an analysis here on what is actually happening because this is only hurting Justin Trudeau and I cannot believe that this is actually happening, that she's coming out and spilling the beans, full beans, on her marriage and how it wasn't good for her mental health. So you're going to want to stick around for the entire video because there's quite a few different articles and videos to take a look at. Next up, we have the National Post. It says, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau says women shouldn't expect the minimum months after the split with Justin. She also shared tips on how she looks after her emotional well-being. I think we need more playfulness in this world. We should be very wary of adults who can't play anymore. And that obviously is directed towards, I mean, I would have to assume her ex-husband, Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. Sophie Gregoire says women shouldn't expect the minimum, which seems to be what she got with Justin Trudeau. Just, uh, uh, you know, eye candy, basically, maybe something to help increase his polls. And now it's all backfiring. So here's, here's a better idea of how Sophie Gregoire Trudeau carried herself. She serenades during the MLK tribute. And as you can see, this is a bit of an older video from eight years ago. These are the likes and dislikes. 1.3 thousand likes, 3.5 thousand dislikes. Because I have heard my fellow human beings and friends here today sing. This is not planned, trust me. I'm going to step up. Yes, and I'm going to sing you a song that I wrote for my daughter, Ella Grace, at a moment where I was going through a difficult time and where I remind myself of all the hope that there is in one's life and all the hope that there is in love and helping out each other. And it's called Smile Back at Me. And it goes like this. Some people doubt mm -hmm, that angels can fly mm -hmm, and some people fight without knowing why. Some people live without seeing the light. And some people live, oh, no, 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 but not quite. And I know that good will prevail, and I could conquer the world with all the love that I feel. When you smile back at me. All right. So you guys, have you guys ever seen the show The Office, the American version with uh, Steve Carell as Michael Scott? 
later in the season of uh, or series of The Office, he dates this woman named Jan, I believe. And Jan does this exact thing. She just starts singing and she embeds herself in her hobby of making candles. And she thinks that she's a really good singer. She just. And she throws herself emotionally into that. She's all about feelings. There's nothing wrong with that. You can absolutely be like a very emotional and empathetic person. That's not what we're criticizing or even laughing at. It's just the prime minister's wife in this case, Sophie. And it, it. It's just very bizarre. It's just very bizarre that there's parallels between Sophie's kind of um, empath uh, characteristics and that of Michael Scott from The Office's girlfriend, Jan, or I don't even know if they were engaged at one point. But if if you've seen the show, hopefully you'll appreciate (laughs) that comparison because it's just it's just comical at this point. But here's a closer look. At, uh, at, at her book, Closer Together, Knowing Ourselves, Loving Each Other, author Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. Sophie Trudeau invites readers on a deeply personal journey towards self-knowledge, acceptance, and empowerment, drawing on the expertise of top psychologists, psychiatrists, scientists, and thought leaders. As a passionate advocate for mental health, Sophie Gregor Trudeau believes that in order to know and accept ourselves fully, we need to understand why we think and feel the way we do and recognize the experiences, attitudes, and patterns that may be holding us back. Justin Trudeau. (laughs) And yet, all of us are capable of growth and positive change. If we are willing to stay open and curious throughout our lives, in Closer Together, Sophie shares moments from her own journey. From her childhood through her struggles with an eating disorder in her teens and early adulthood. Okay. How does the way we raise contribute, how we were raised contribute to our sense of self? How can we better prepare ourselves with, to deal with big emotions? How do we, uh, how do we need our relationships and what can we contribute to them? What role do physical activity and creative pursuits play in mental health? And how Justin Trudeau, uh, ruined my mental health. I believe that's in there somewhere, or maybe I'm uh, I'm paraphrasing based off my own thoughts. But nonetheless, this is coming out April twenty third, twenty twenty four, which would have been even more funny if it came out on April first, twenty twenty four, which would be the day of uh, the carbon tax that Justin Trudeau is just just his feet are in the sand on that one. He doesn't seem like he's budging at all. So I don't know if you're interested at all in getting this book. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably not going to want to take a look at that, but this is why it's so detrimental. Sophie and Grigoire, Sophie Grigoire Trudeau and Justin Trudeau to the liberals were a very good team. She was very involved with a lot of different pursuits. She tried to make a name for herself is what I'm trying to say. She didn't want to be known. I don't believe that she wants to be known as Justin Trudeau's wife or ex-wife. She's tried to be a bit of a Michelle Obama, right? Having her own kind of identity and her own public figure things. And the liberals, people that actively support Justin Trudeau and the liberal ideology, they look up to Sophie as like a very strong, powerful woman, especially through this uh, through this separation and what seems like a divorce now. They say, wow, you're such a powerful woman. You're actually doing what's best for yourself, for your future, and maybe even for your kids, and you're taking control of your life, which that all sounds great. I'm sure. I, I'm not disagreeing with removing yourself from toxic situations if that is the case but in this book she's talking about how her relationship with Justin Trudeau I believe took a toll on her mental health and that's why she needs to step away which means that Justin Trudeau is inherently a toxic individual which hey if you're watching this we know that but now this is coming into or from a place of his personal life which is very interesting because uh, Sophie if you're watching this if you would like a sticker, let me know. Or if you'd like one of these stickers, let me know, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. Um, but I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you think uh, this is good for Justin Trudeau? Or do you think this is only going to cause harm? Please let me know down below. 
Next up, we have the Toronto Sun saying, did Sophie Grigorov Trudeau take swipe at Justin? You shouldn't expect the minimum. We shouldn't have to hold it together as hold it all together as women. And this is where it's kind of controversial uh, in the sense of keeping a family together, because from the conservative mentality, it's, you know, you, you find a partner, you settle down and you, you make it work, right? You make it work. It's not about putting up with somebody else's crap. It's about making it work, coming together as a family and putting in that time and effort. And in, in today's modern culture, it's so easy to just swipe, swipe, swipe. Oh, next TikTok, next Instagram reel, next YouTube short, swipe, swipe, swipe. And that's kind of how we're being preconditioned to live our lives and that it doesn't just stem or, or stay on the platform of social media and entertainment, but that goes into our lives where you can just say, okay, onto the next, onto the next, onto the next, instead of actually trying to work things out. So from a conservative standpoint and ideology, it's, this is very wrong to um, not only throw in the towel into a, a, a marriage, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not trying to say if anyone's done that, it's bad. Divorce happens. That's fine. People uh, get along and sometimes people don't, but it, it, making it public, like, and then her coming out and, and talking so much crap about Justin Trudeau. Hey, I'm, I'm all for it. If anyone wants to talk crap about Justin Trudeau, yeah, let's let's go. Let's do it, right? That's what this whole channel is, kind of the foundation and the pillars of this channel are based off of. But it's just very weird that his ex-wife is now jumping on, on that train. But uh, let me know down below if you agree with it or not. After her much publicized split with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Sophie Grigard Trudeau is turning the page by releasing a self-help book titled Closer Together, Knowing Ourselves and Loving Each Other. Set to hit bookstores at the end of April, Sophie, who's 48, is plotting two books focusing on her mental health journey. Part of the description of the book of her publisher's website reads, Sophie Grigard Trudeau invites readers on a deeply personal journey towards self-knowledge, acceptance, empowerment, drawing on the expertise of top psychologists. Okay, so we've already read that summary. Uh, I don't know if this book is going to do you any good for Trudeau or for the upcoming election. Her post generated almost 11,000 likes, but her cheery comments divided her followers. Uh oh. So I guess this is the cover of what she posted. Sophie Grigard Trudeau has 331,000 followers on Instagram. Life is serious. We are not. L Canada and L Quebec allowed me some creative playtime as I'm getting ready for my book launch and tour. We had fun, but most importantly, we discussed well-being, relationships, and family. This is just the beginning, and I'm looking forward to getting closer together in life under your reading eyes or attentive ears soon. There you go, folks. It is happening. That dress is stunning. It fits you perfectly. All right. I'm sure they're not going to post any of the comments in her uh, in her actual posts that involve, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau. But we do have a little bit of a clip here from Justin Trudeau appearing on a podcast. Let's take a look at this. It was very Canadian. You scrap and, you know, you kick the, the crap out of each other and then you shake hands, you go for a beer. That always was a very Canadian thing to me. People ask me all the time how we became friends and, you know, people always say to me, I know he's your friend, but, you know, it always opens with that. And I say, we became friends because I used to say, when I thought you were full of shit, I would tell you, <laughs> right? When we disagreed on something, we would have a real sort of, you know, enlightened. And I'd set you straight. And you'd set me straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I want. So here, we're, we're, we're going to stop it there. But this is, this is something I've analyzed is Justin Trudeau has been a media person. He's been a mainstream media person. All of his appearances have been on mainstream media, on breakfast television, whatever it is. It's all been mainstream media. It hasn't been independent podcasts. It hasn't been on a deeper level that you get to actually see someone's personality. Kind of like the Joe Rogan podcast, right? Longer form content where it's person to person and it's not some scripted thing. And so not that I'm trying to give the liberals any points to take that could help their cause but this right here having the prime minister or a major politician appear on a podcast in person not through zoom not through skype not a digital podcast but in person having a beer and shooting the shit where nothing is scripted and you're seeing him laugh you're seeing him in regular clothes i think that that's a strategy that the liberals are going to be going with until the upcoming election because justin trudeau is trying to 
get rid of all the controversies, right? And he's trying to appeal to the everyday person. And I think it's, I hate to say it, but I think it's, it's a good strategy. I just think it's a little too late for him to actually pull it off and for it to be successful. And this should be something that the conservatives that Pierre Polyev might want to consider is this long form podcast, having a beer, shooting the shit, wearing plain clothes, getting out of your suit and dropping the politician act laughing having a good time and um and just being more of a person because that's what the people want or at least that's what i've heard from talking to people in real life when i go out with my family you know sometimes i get recognized saying, hey mr sunshine i love your videos hey what do you think about this that and the other thing and the the, the answer always comes down to people from what I've witnessed, from my talking points, and maybe you can have uh, something to say down in the comments, whether you agree or disagree, and as to why, but people want a leader that is relatable, not somebody that props themselves up on a pedestal, but a real person, somebody that can shoot the shit on a podcast, right? Somebody that can wear plain clothes, have a beer, talk about how expensive beer is, not from a political standpoint, but man, you go out and you buy a beer, you buy, you can have a pint of, of craft beer, whatever it is at, um, well, I guess you can't have a pint of craft beer, but a pint of any sort of beer at a bar. And it's like, Twelve dollars to over ten dollars. It's just it's very expensive, right? So if you can have somebody, a politician, even the prime minister of a country, whether it's Justin Trudeau or the next prime minister, which we all all roads are seeming to lead towards, that's going to be Pierre Polyev. I think that more human approach and distancing yourself from mainstream media interviews and just being just being a bro, just being a dude, just being a relatable human being is only going to benefit whoever can do that in the long run. And Justin Trudeau is getting a head start. I haven't really seen Pierre Polyev appear on any podcasts. Uh, I know that he's appeared on mainstream media or secondary media, like, you know, True North. And I don't think he's appeared on Rebel News from an interview standpoint, but he's gone on to and talked with uh, True North and stuff like that, which I think is good. But I think uh, the next person, who does these more long form podcasts is going to get a significant advantage when it comes to polling, because this is, this is where our attention is, is this longer form content. Yeah. The shorts and the short clips and the videos that are 20 minutes or around 10 minutes, whatever it is that makes a difference, but actually sitting down. I mean, if, if you sat down and you watched, I'm not saying that if you watched this podcast, right for an hour right from from terry demonte or at least that's where it's been uploaded i'm not saying that if you watch this you're gonna like justin trudeau but chances are if you watch a one hour podcast of justin trudeau there's probably going to be some things not everything but maybe a couple points where you're like shit i hate the guy but i actually agree with that and that that's not at all me saying the carbon tax i think that that's a load of crap and i think that he's very delusional with his approach towards taxation here in Canada and a lot of people call it taxation theft where he thinks that more tax is going to solve our problems I think there's a big mismanagement but I do think that people that are on the fence on whether they actually want to vote for Justin Trudeau this longer form content is only going to solidify um, their ideas and say oh yeah no I like Trudeau he's a good guy right I think that that's where uh, he's trying to head and He's way too far in the polls, um, behind in the polls to actually get any momentum. But that's a, if anyone from the Conservative Party of Canada's team is watching this, um, I think that the next move would be for the Conservatives to do that. And the Conservatives actually have their own podcast, but it's just the politicians talking amongst the politicians. I think bringing in, you know, uh, people that have a bit of an influence, such as I don't know, maybe Mr. Sunshine Baby with 372,000 or close to 400,000 subscribers in a longer form in-person podcast might be beneficial, but I have my own bias and I would like to sit down and have a beer with the conservative MPs and shoot the shit for an hour, but that's just me. Uh, let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd ever be interested in is me sitting down um, and having a bit of a longer form chat with these uh, with these conservative MPs. And you know what, man? I'm not saying I would sit down and rather have a beer with Justin Trudeau, but I would sit down and talk with Justin Trudeau for an hour and have a beer. Absolutely. Maybe Pierre on one side and Trudeau on the other, and we could all just sit down and shoot the shit and, and see what's up. But 
That's just me. I'd, I'd, I'd love for that. I crave chaos. Nonetheless, that's where we're going to end today's video, folks. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, any questions, comments, or concerns. And on your way out, I'd really appreciate it if you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already, as well as uh, one last thank you to today's sponsor, Private Internet Access, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.